welcome back to GCN Racing and to highlights of Stage 4 of La Vuelta. Yesterday we had our first bunch sprint of the race and it was Sam Bennett who continued his excellent form. He easily came round Trek Segafredo's Ed Churns before the line in Alicante to take his first Vuelta stage win. And there was more than one reason for the Irish to celebrate as Nicholas Roach safely held on to his overall race lead, still two seconds in front of Nairo Quintana. Today's stage was another one that we expected to be for the sprinters. This is what it looked like. There was a third category climb towards the end, but it crested with still 46 k remaining, leaving the fast men and their teams plenty of time to get back on if they were distanced. The other potential hurdle though, the strong possibility of high winds and rain. Just two riders form the day's early move, Yeli Walais of Lotto Sudau and Yorga Kubero of Burgos BH. The big news from the early part of the stage though was the abandonment of Steven Kreisweit, this man's teammate. He's reportedly been suffering with a knee injury which he didn't want to make any worse. Also bruised but thankfully not badly was Rigoberto Uran. He came down with his teammate at EF Education first, Mitch Doppler, 57 k's to go. Did require a bike change and a bit of a chase back on, but eventually, thankfully, they'd all get back onto the main peloton. Not what you want at this stage of a Grand Tour, but fingers crossed he'll be OK. It was Wallace who crossed the line in front of the intermediate sprint a couple of kilometres later to take maximum points there. But here's Iran, back at the race doctor's car, wrist strapped up, and we'll have to wait and see if there are any long-term consequences of that crash. Here's the main climb from the day, the Puerto del Orone, 5.8 k's long, an average gradient of just 4.5%. So this shouldn't pose even the sprinters too much of a problem. Although it was at that exact point the weather started to come into play, torrential rain at the midway point of the climb. Although it was the definition of isolated showers, because at the top, where while I took the point, it was still bone dry. Behind the leading duo, it was the King of the Mountains leader, Madrazo, who was off the front of the peloton to take the one remaining point, extending his lead slightly in that competition. Taking control on the descent were Mobistar, keeping Nairo Quintana safe and sound. However, the pace that they were setting down this hill was enough to see the peloton split by the end of it. Some frantic chasing going on here. Turning quick step back to the front to set the pace, but out front there was a mechanical problem for Kubro, which saw him basically stuck in his biggest gear, 53 by 11, and that spelt the end of his day out front. While Eyes by this point wasn't going to wait around, and Kubro was soon caught by the main peloton, who was being led by that point by Bora Hansborough. And soon, the end would come for Wallace too. With just 16 second advantage and 20 k's to go, he knew the game was up, so he sat up and waited for the bunch. The rain was holding off, but the wind was picking up towards the finish, and eventually it was enough to see some splits in the bunch. Around once again on the wrong side of it, he and his team would be facing another big chase. Always amazing just how quickly things can hit the fan in cycling. Uh, Rigoberto Uran and his teammates would eventually get back on though. Moving on to five kilometres to go, and Remy Cavagna of the Koenig Quickstep had found himself completely accidentally alone off the front. He powered out of a corner and gapped the riders behind, and once given the all clear by his team, took his own chance to go for the stage win. And he did a great job really putting pressure on the other sprint teams. His lead there had been greatly reduced by 2Ks to go, and by 1.2 to go, he'd been caught by the main peloton. And so we had our expected bunch sprint. De Koenig quick step straight back to the front for their lead out man and sprinter Fabio Jakobsen. The Dutch champion there in third place, but into the finish straight it was Team Sunweb leading out Max Valscheid. But in second place was Max Ricciesi. Now the Argentinian is one of the best lead out riders in the world. With Fabio Jakobsen on his wheel, they were going to be hard to beat, although coming from lengths back was yesterday's stage winner Sam Bennett. Trying desperately to get onto the wheel, he got alongside and they both lunged for the line. That was a close one, even this shot didn't really clear up the result, but the photo finish did. Fabio Jakobsen taking his first Grand Tour stage victory by the narrowest of margins. Here's your top ten on the stage, Jakobsen from Bennett, Max Valscheid taking third on the day. Well, what a way to win your first Grand Tour stage, just 22 years of age, already the Dutch champion, now already a winner of a stage of a Grand Tour. No change on the GC, Nico Roach still at the head of affairs, two seconds in front of Nairo Quintana, but tomorrow that could all change. We've got our first summit finish and it's a big one. The stage itself is 170 k's long, predominantly on rolling terrain, until the finish, which is up the Havalambra Observatory. 11 kilometres long, but it's the last five that are the most brutal, rarely dipping below 10% gradient. My prediction? Fabio Aru, believe it or not. Let us know your predictions in the comments. I'll see you tomorrow.